Hello, this is John Jughead Pearson, and uh, today I'm going to be exploring uh, Nara with you. Actually, I did it quite a while ago, but I'm finally getting to piecing this one together. Um, I'm also going to change, I think maybe change the name of, the, of my program to a punk rock wizard's guide to hiking and or getting lost, because I think the idea that I'm an idiot is kind of inherent within the struggles of my hiking and information that I try to bring to you. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I just thought about that while I was hiking this last one, which was Hiei, which I finally got to do. I talk about it in this one, of doing it, and I finally did it. Uh, it got pretty ugly here for a while, weather-wise. But anyway, here's a, a few facts about Nara before we start. Um, it's about 30 minutes away from Osaka. It was once the capital of Japan. And it's older than Kyoto, which is a, a super old uh, city here, which I will be doing later. Um, it's about uh, 1,200 years old, this area. Um, it used to be spread out a lot farther, and now it's more condensed. Uh, that's why a lot of people like going there, because all the temples and the shrines are all sort of condensed into one area called Nara Park. Uh, it was the capital of Japan from AD 710 to 784. Uh, it was modeled after a Chinese capital. Uh, it's the source of Japan's earliest art and literature and the locale for many early Japanese historical events and myths. Uh, Buddhism flourished here and became such a strong political force, the emperors felt threatened and moved the capital to Kyoto. Uh, so that's enough. And now, so here is my trip to Nara Park. Hello, this is John here, walking out of my place of residence in Kagandori House. Um, I was going to go to Hiei, Hiei, the hike. Um, I keep on putting this one off. Uh, this time I was all ready to go in the morning, but uh, my phone stopped working and I actually had to spend uh, almost two days straight going to the Ife, to the Apple store. Uh, it actually worked out fine. They apologized and gave me a new phone, but I, and I even got to work on uh, some of my Japanese so that they could so that we could communicate. Um, but I didn't want to waste this beautiful day, so uh, it's about 2 p.m. and I'm heading over to uh, Nara, which, or Nara, um, which is one of the coolest places to go if you uh, live or, or visiting Osaka. It's probably one place that would be on almost everyone's list to go visit. I don't know if I'll be there in time to go to the temple, but there's a lot of other cool things that, uh, that we'll see there including the deer that come up to you and uh, and in some cases attack you as uh, I will probably tell that story later on um, but it's going to take me about an hour and a half to get there I think so uh, see you over there I just got into the Nara station and now I'm going to check to see if I have a fair adjustment I think I showed one of these before but uh, if you don't know how much your ride is you could always just put the lowest amount in and then Put your ticket in once you get there. Let me see how much more I owe. I owe 350 more. So that's what I will do. See? See? You just learned something. And now it gives me another ticket. And now I can just walk out with this. And that's what I will do. It's a fairly big station here for how small Nara really is. Um, probably because there's so much traffic that comes through here. But I'm going to get out of this station and then uh, probably show you a little bit about. Okay, this is also very famous here. These uh, are deer. These are fake ones, but you'll see real ones. And this little figurine here, too. People like to take a picture with it. Uh, that's like the baby Buddha. Alright, I'm gonna go upstairs now. Alright, now we are outside the Kintetsu, kin, kin, <laughs> Kintetsu Nara line. Uh, this is a really cool sort of strip down this side here. We have a lot of really good uh, restaurants. And at the end of this is actually an owl cafe that I've gone to before. Uh, but I'm gonna try to get us to the uh, temple area right now. It's like a 15 minute walk. It's just a straight straight line right here. 
Um, I've been in the temple a few times and it's almost quarter to four now and it closes at five. So if it's not too expensive, I might take us for a little tour inside that temple. Um, there's going to be a little bit some exciting stuff coming up soon, but this is going to be boring for a little while, so I'll turn this on. Not too far out of the station, there's a temple while you're walking towards the Todaiji Temple, which is the largest temple around here. Maybe the largest in Japan. I know it has the largest uh, Buddha in Japan. Um, but before you get there, to your right, is a temple called the uh, Kofukuji? Yeah, Kofukuji Temple. Um, it's a nice little thing to view right before you uh, head out to the larger temples. Um, we're, uh, I'm heading there right now to show you. Um, there's a little courtyard, which you can see right here. It's not very exciting looking at all, but I think the, uh, the temple is actually a pretty cool looking uh, structure. I think I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to see if I can, how can I turn this around? Oh, I guess I can't turn around when I'm recording, so I will now. And uh, here it is. There's always something going on here. It looks like uh, some kind of festival. Uh, you might even have to pay to go in. Oh, you do. They're going to have some sort of concert. But here is the temple. Uh, it's pretty tall. It's really, really cool. But I'm not going to go in here and pay. Um, so, what, what do we got going on here? Yeah. Colofino with strings. Oh, there's going to be an orchestra playing here. I need to go around. Well, no, that's about it. So that's our only view of it today. Right there. So as I'm walking through this uh, little park here that has nothing exciting to see on the way to the temple, I thought I might uh, talk a little bit about the word gaijin, which, uh, which used to be a very derogatory uh, name for anybody who isn't Japanese, who's foreign, you know, not born in Japan or of Japanese racial uh, profile. <laughs> um, oh, I'm going to step over this thing now. I got myself caught in a little area here. But anyway, I should have just walked up to the... Well, now I got away from traffic. But anyway, so gaijin now is that's kind of more accepted. Uh, as just the term for someone who isn't Japanese um, and one thing being a, a gaijin in Japan living in Osaka and even though I work at USJ studios and see a lot of Westerners um, outside in the, the actual world of the city I don't really see that many so when I come to the uh, tourist attractions like Nara uh, it really reminds me that I am a gaijin. There's something that I think a lot of people that move here that are Westerners, uh, a lot of them tend to be outcasts, I've noticed, or people that probably just feel like they stick out weird in their own countries. Um, so you see a few of them all around Osaka. Not a few, there's, you know, like hundreds, because a lot of them teach English. Uh, but when you come to Nara, you, you see the regular tourists, and that's where it really sticks out that... Uh, um, that you're not really an outcast, that, you know, there's, there's people like you everywhere you go. When you reach this uh, tunnel on the road, you know that you're close to the Todaiji Temple. You can also cross over to go to the side of the Todaiji Temple, which is to your left. But I kind of like going up on the right and crossing with the traffic. Uh, so we shall see that in a moment. Here are some deer hanging out. Um, it looks like the, there's a doe and a deer. It looks like the deer's uh, horns have been cut off. They do that, I think it's once a year that they cut them off. So this might have been the season where they cut them off. Um, uh, but these are only two of them. You'll see a lot more where we're going. Now this is the little park, uh, it's also a museum. Uh, right before you get into the Todaiji Temple area. Um, often this little area is full of the does and the deers. They like to uh, gather around this area. Uh, 
I may actually uh, post a picture in this vlog of uh, me one day when I came here with uh, Paige where I sat uh, right on this grid and we uh, made a funny album cover called Pooping on a Grid. I think my friend Paul Russell <laughs> uh, did it so maybe I'll include those pictures but this whole area was was full of deer. I imagine they're all hanging in the temple ground area. Uh, the first area we will go into is the free area of the temple. You can wander all the grounds for free and I think I don't know if all night but probably pretty late but the uh, temple inside where the largest Buddha in Japan is kept um, has a charge and that closes at five um, but there's plenty to explore if we decide not to go and pay for that so here's a sign of those, all the things they got going here in Nara Nara National Museum the Kintetsu Nara Station of course Kokukuchi Temple Todaiji Temple Shosain Treasury Repository Tobihino Temple it was pretty cool looking um, and now I'm going to make out these. These are great. <laughs> In the traditional garb. It's sort of a, well, a tradition for the Japanese on certain holidays and for when they're having ceremonies or doing their wedding parties that they get dressed up in the old traditional Japanese garb, the kimonos, kimonos and they come to Nara to pray at the uh, temple. This is the main park around here, and this, if I have time, I might climb this, or hike this mountain, or hill, that's right behind the temple. Uh, there's also another temple in this area that I really enjoy, that has these beautiful uh, Japanese lanterns. I'm going to try to make it into there. Um, it's a really long light we got going. That's one reason to go through the tunnel and go to the other side, but... Um, Eh, no big deal. Also, uh, people have rickshaws here and, and uh, bicycles, and that's a really popular thing people do. I've never done it. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't care. Um, but also, you can, there's these carts at all over the place, and for, looks like 150 yen, which is about a buck fifty, you can buy these little cookies that drive the deer crazy. You can see deer all around it. We are now in the deer territory. Everyone loves to come here and feed the deer. The deer are uh, sacred animals, so they just uh, get to roam free in here. I, um, and they always seem to prosper around uh, temples. But this one, this Nara temple, is known for all the deer that hang out here, and people come and, uh, and feed them. They're just hang out with them. There's plenty of places to buy things, of course. There's one deer hanging out by the bicycle rack. Jitencha, that's what, that's how you say bicycle in Japanese. I don't really see uh, so many, but uh, they're all spread out a lot more than I usually remember them being of the deer. Um, But as we approach the temple entrance, we may see a bunch more. Uh, there's a lot of people here today. And this is, you know, it's October, so it's one of the uh, season highs for touring Japan. Uh, this is a nice little, nice little area here. As you can see, there's a deer right down over there. Look at just cleaning himself and hanging out. Yeah, all the deer you're gonna see here are gonna have the cut horns. They must have uh, just done that fairly recently because they get pretty sharp and long. Oh, there's some guys hanging out. Look at these three. They're just having a good time hanging out here. Another one over here, a little bit isolated. Maybe he likes to hang out with people a little bit more. And this is the front of the temple. Oh, there. 
this one's real bad. Oh, there's a deer right in front of me. And uh, go down to this area where people get to hang out with the deer. Oh, look at this. And they love the peace sign for the pictures of Japanese. Oh, there's a bunch of them over here just hanging out. the uh, temple now. This is, uh, oh, look at that deer just walked out by me. Okay, I'm gonna go in. It's really hard to do this entrance here uh, justice. Um, it's such an immense wooden structure. It's really beautiful. And once again, a lot of the stuff seen in person has just a different emotional effect on you. You know, you can feel the, the age and the, the history and just the sublimeness of how large these structures are and how they were built, you know, mostly by hand, uh, by slaves probably. Uh, maybe I should look into that too. <laughs> uh, we're definitely the lower class. Um, another thing too, when you're walking into a temple area, you can see this wooden structure. Oh, look, some people are standing on it. What we're supposed to do on this wooden structure here is not step on it, so you're supposed to step. You have to step over. Oh, that's the proper way to do it. That shows respect uh, towards the entrance of the temple. And now I'm going to go in a little further. Okay, now this is the area I was in where I'll tell you my story now. I was with Paige. Uh, and uh, her best friend Elise, and they're both very gorgeous women. Uh, I don't know if that means much to deer, but it seemed to in this case. Um, but they hadn't cut any of the horns on the deer yet. So I was with them, and we had bought the, bought the cookies to feed people. And I was over in this little area over here. You'll see there's some deer hanging out here. And I'm going to go over here to tell the story so I'm away from the crowd. But we were over here right before going into the main temple area. Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah, back there. So we were over here. And this deer just uh, came up to me and started pushing on me, pushing on my, my stomach with his horns. Like, not like charging me, but pushing me as hard as he, you know, as hard as he could. And it was like forcing me and all these uh, Japanese and other tourists all of a sudden uh, like moved away from me. And uh, my two friends, uh, Paige and Elise, moved, moved a little bit away. Uh, and we realized that they, that this was uh, him sort of showing his, uh, that this was his territory. And, uh, and for some reason, uh, my girls, um, he was trying to show his his uh, superiority over me. So he was pushing and pushing, and I had to grab his horns to, to stop him from uh, forcing them into my stomach. Once again, nobody was doing anything. There was no one uh, stepping forward to help. But then what uh, Paige had said to do, which was smart, is I took my uh, bag off my shoulders, and I just laid it down and threw it right by him. And he went after my bag, and we were able to walk away. And then like five minutes later, we went back for my bag. Um, but there's nothing in it, so you couldn't take anything, but he thought maybe there could have been food in there. Uh, it was very scary, but I've never seen anything like that happen here before or since that, but it can happen. I think this is the guy right here. I mean, he looks a little less threatening now that his horns are gone and he's relaxing, but um, he had these very determined eyes. And um, I, was, I was pretty scared, but I stayed calm. And I think that sort of helped in the moment, because if I would have ran, he probably would have charged after me. Uh, so here's the front of the, uh, the inner gate. And then you go to the left side is where we will get tickets to go in. 
it's so oh there's a whole school of people going in now i'm gonna check out uh what i'm gonna go in and uh maybe we'll see you inside there was a huge group of about 100 uh, school kids that were go going in at the time so i decided to take a side trip to the left side of it to this uh i think temple grounds uh garden um Got a nice little bridge over here. Very peaceful area. And the deer don't seem to hang out in here. They might actually prevent them from coming into this area. I don't know if I'd actually come over here. I'm going up to this thing called a Kaidando. I imagine it's up those stairs you can see in the distance right here. All right, check in in a moment. Danger, off limits. Abunai, Abunai means danger. Kyotsukete means be careful. Abunai. Look how large that man's hands are. Maybe they're trying to give a little bit of perspective. And look how the uh, don't sign is behind him. I guess that makes more sense, but you usually see the X's in front. Um, so, um, this was just another side temple. I hadn't been here before. Um, also, uh, you might notice that you're getting my cheap tour because... Uh, I don't really have any money to spend this week. Uh, they changed the uh, contract here at, at the Universal Studios where you have to work two months before getting your pay. So I wasn't ready for that. I got per diem, like food money, but uh, so I haven't really had much money. So doing sort of the cheap tour this time around of Kyoto. It's the small things I like, watching a man pick up a rock. Okay, I'm going to go back down the stairs. I'm going to go, uh, I think well, we're going to take you into the temple, which looms there in the background. So I did, I brought us in. It was only 500 yen, uh, I, not to go into the museum. Um, so here is the beautiful Todaiji temple. Uh, we are still outside of the uh, ticket area. I mean, I actually just bought a ticket. And this place, just in case you know, is open from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and it is one of the biggest tourist, attraction, tourist attractions in Japan. But it's huge, so, uh, you know, there's lots of room. It doesn't ever really feel too overcrowded. I'm going to go in and we'll get another view. The Todaiji temple always smells of uh, some really beautiful, nice smelling incense. Um, I remember me and someone were talking about how incense in general sort of drive us crazy, but in the temples they always smell really nice. And people, you know, you pay a yen to uh, burn your own incense stick and plant it there. Uh, this is one of the main places for a picture of the temple that you would do from these steps right here the old uh, entrance uh, it's really an amazing building i'm going to take some pictures now all the temples have this area where you uh, wash your hands before you go in uh, the sort of uh, cleansing it's you do, let me show you, it's your right hand washes your left hand, left hand washes your right hand, and then you put some in your mouth and then you wash your hands by tipping it towards you. I think that's right. Okay, so now we're going to walk into the main temple area. I'm going to remember to step over the threshold. And here is where 
we are in the what they call the Buddha Hall. And you know it's called that because it houses the largest Buddha in Japan, right there. All that gold around it. And some kid is ringing the dong, ringing the gong, ringing the dong. Um, so there's a pretty good view of it. So huge. Uh, I also like this side statue over here, which is uh, completely made of gold. Uh, this one is called the Kokuzo Osatsu. Here's another view of the Buddha. Uh, and now we're going to go around the corner, which is my favorite part of it. Um, those are really like sort of serene sculptures, you know, very tranquil. That's the word I've been using lately. And then you turn the corner and then you have this soldier looming in the corner here. And the light on him is beautiful. Uh, where he cast it down uh, across his shoulders and leaves his head sort of dark and ominous. And uh, I noticed the last time I was here that he's actually standing on the heads of devils. Akuma, which is devils. Look at his head, just looking down at you. You small people, I could step on you. Um, Alright, I'm going to take some pictures of this. Alright, now we're at the back of the uh, Buddha, from the Buddha Hall. Um, there's a sort of a architectural display of what the all the temple grounds used to look like before. And now we're coming up to a fascinating thing that you can do here. You can see there's a long line, and I know that I can't fit through it, so I'm not even going to bother going through the line. Um, but if you come up, look at all these people here today. Um, there's a pole here, you can see right now, where the idea is to try to fit your body through the hole. And of course, children can make it uh, pretty easily, but sometimes they get uh, kind of scared to go through. You know, like that little girl can just climb right through without any problems. And here's another statue on the side here. Hang on. I'd like to see somebody of a little bit more girth try to go through, but it looks like we all have smaller people. Oh, look, she's taking a picture on the other side. I'm going to walk around to the other side of this. Oh, here's someone over here. Some of this stuff right in my way. I'm just gonna make it through. <laughs> that was nice. Uh, me and the other Westerner agreed that that was a nice little birth. Uh, this is kind of like, they, they do like the phrase reborn. I remember US, USJ, uh, one year they just called it the year of the reborn. So I think this sort of uh, has that same sort of significance of being reborn. Pulling yourself through, like, you know, out of the room. <laughs> Kids love it. So now we're coming up to the other side of the Big Buddha. This is another figurine um, sitting out to its left. And of course, like all of these places, there's plenty of shit you can buy. Um, and here's another view of the glorious Buddha. Great. I think I'm going to get out of the temple area now. Um, love this place. Uh, if you come to Osaka and you don't come here, it's kind of a wrong move. Uh, it should be experienced by everyone, I, I believe. Uh, so, all right, let's see what's next. All right, this is a statue of a man named Binzudu. Um, it was erected in the 18th century. Um, as the saying goes, he was a sort of a, a, he had a cult, a master of occult powers, which was probably their doctors of the day. 
Um, but supposedly if you make a donation and then rub this little thing over here, uh, and then you rub a part of your body that's aching, then it will heal. Um, I just tried it with my stomach. My stomach's been hurting a lot lately, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, so now we were, we went to the Todaiji Temple, and now I walked out of the gate, and we are over here, and I'm going to go over to here to this Shunjodo Hall in the Belfry. And uh, where are we going to try to get to the Fukedo Fukedo Hall? Uh, I'll tell a story up there. Tori. We just went through another Tori or Tori right there, which we learned also means bird. But Tori and Tori. That was just a Tori. Bird is Tori. Uh, but it really, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't start this video again the, to do that. I just wanted to show you these amazing tree roots that they have. When I first came to Japan, this was the thing I, that I was most just awestruck by was the um, the root systems and how they're above the ground. Uh, you can find this a lot in Japan. I think it's really beautiful. Uh, when I was in um, Okinawa, the whole island has uh, beautiful trees like this. Um, I don't know if I will be able to get back to Okinawa, but if I do, I will take a video of that. But if not, try to make it there. Another beautiful place. Here's some deer on this road up to this next temple. Okay. Let's see if I can capture this. the noise that the small ones make. Look, here's a deer that still has its horns. This is probably the only one I've seen here that still has its horns. I don't know why that would be. Maybe they haven't got to him yet? Or maybe He's something special. I think he's gonna kill me. No? Or lick me. Oh, there's a guy on the roof working. Roof. Oh, oh he's putting up an antenna. Now not as many people make it over to this area, but I I almost like this area more than the main Kodaiji Temple. Um, I don't think I have time enough to get up and go inside. Uh, maybe there's still people up there, maybe we can go in. But I was going to say is, this is where we came for a fire festival. I remind myself to get the actual name of what it's called. But at the fire festival, where these people are standing up on the balcony right there, the monks, they come running from inside this Pepsi truck. No, they come running from inside this building and they run up this, see this little hall right, right here uh, with these flaming uh, balls of, of hay. Um, huge, huge, like like as large as their body, and it's, they're on big poles, and they run up this thing, and then they set them in the corners, the first corner of this balcony, and then they roll it, they roll it along the side as they go running, the monks running, and you can see their robes sort of like flowing behind them, and they stop it here. And then they're on these long poles, and the fire just juts out over the uh, the people watching. And then the, then it the, then the, then they take it away, and they do that for I, I don't know how many times it was, but it was like ten times. And uh, you know the sparks would go all over the audience. And, uh, it seemed a little dangerous, but also it was pretty w one of the most amazing things I had seen. Uh, very impressive. 
Um, it looks like I can still get up here in time. Uh, good. So these are the stairs I just climbed, and as you can see, the sun is bright in the sky. It's starting to set, which means I won't be able to get to my hike, but uh, I think it's kind of important to see this area, which is where the fire festival happens, and it's got an amazing view of the whole Nara area. the temple itself is closing on the inside so we can't go in. But that's okay. It's more about this view. This is where we were all standing for the fire festival. This uh, hill was uh, loaded with people. We actually got to come up here and first because we caught it right before they closed off this area. And this whole area here, it was dark out, but this whole area was full of uh, umbrellas and people. Um. Once again, like so many of these, Japanese temple areas. There's stuff tucked around every corner. I mean, some of it starts to look the same, you know, once you visit a bunch of these, but I really think it's great that there's open access to all these areas and no one's really, they have a few guards, but you know, they're so sacred to the Japanese culture that no one would dare uh, cause any harm to these areas So it makes it very easy to keep it open to the public um, I don't think I've gone over to this little area here yet um, This is about as hikey <laughs> as I will get on this trip There's some small shrines This little guy is wearing a little bib, which I had said before are the, uh, I think, I, I don't think I'm mistaken. I'll, let me maybe look this up again. But they're, you, usually they mean they're for the, uh, the young dead, the people who have died uh, before birth or in birth or maybe as children. Um, that's what the little bibs are for. So I'm going to take a picture of this. I really miss my hiking. I'm hoping tomorrow that I'll be able to get to Hie uh, for that hike because look at just this little small path here uh, made me very excited <laughs> even though I don't have time before the sun sets to do much exploring. Um, but I'm going to take this for a little while until maybe the sun starts sinking over the temple. The sun is hitting this area so beautifully. Look at all those colors, purples and bright greens and yellows and reds and auburns and browns. Uh, it's a really pretty path. Not too far from the civilization of the temples, just right there. It just sort of rides along the, the backyard of the temple. I couldn't really resist uh, taking that path for a little while. I think I probably, in this video, posted some of the pictures I just took of the uh, sun, how beautiful it is. Um, but this looks like it was an area that used to be more traveled, and now they sort of have uh, an area cut off. Uh, and it looks like this was, you know, a rest area or something. Not quite sure what. Um, to the top of this 
Um, damn, I don't know. Uh, it's a sewer system. Yeah, that's what that is. Um, but once again, <laughs> beautiful moss even on their source system. Oh, look at this. The way this metal is all beaten up there, too. Hmm, interesting. Looks like the uh, Tin Man got reappropriated and used for something a little bit more useful to society instead of a man with no heart. I took another side path. It didn't go really go anywhere. But now I'm coming back down into the uh, temple area. Yeah, stay a little bit more quiet. Maybe see the uh, sun go down. This is the third time I've been lucky enough to be at a place where I get to see the sun go down. I never think to do it on purpose, but uh, um, obviously, as you can see all these people standing here, it's uh, definitely a pastime that the Japanese enjoy to do. Um, and they come to the temple to do it and see it sink down over the beautiful trees and over the temple. Uh, pretty cool. So I think I'm going to move along now, away from this uh, beautiful area. Like I said, it has some of the coolest uh, events going on here, uh, the fire festival, and just actually just coming here to watch the sunset is very, very utsukushi, beautiful. Um, so I'm going to try to explore more before it gets too dark to even shoot anything. I think I was behind there in the hills. Uh, earlier. So I think I'm just going to fight the urge to just stay here and take in all the beauty. I think I'm going to explore further. Well, it's probably starting to get too dark t to video much more of this uh, trip to Nara, but I hope you got a little bit of a sense of it. There's a lot more to see. Um, I'm still going to wander around a little bit more, and maybe I'll attach some pictures to the uh, end of this video. Um, mm, where's that deer? There he is. Look, there's a deer. There's a deer right there. And there's a bunch over, uh, right over there by the light. I took some pictures of them. Um, now I'm going to go down the path. And like I said, still explore a little more. But uh, this might be my end of my hour trip for the video blog. So I um, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, hopefully tomorrow I will actually get to the Hie, Hie hike. Um, if I get up early enough, all right. Well, there it is. There is Nara. 
Um, I wrote down a few things to correct, uh, so let me go through some of those before I say goodbye to you. Um, I said that I wondered if Todaiji Temple was the largest temple. Um, I'm, I couldn't find that. It, I don't think it's technically the largest temple, but I'm right that the Buddha inside is the largest uh, Buddha. Um, it's the largest bronze Buddha. So here it says, uh, Daibutsu-san um, is the world's largest bronze Buddha, originally constructed between 735 and 749 A.D., the colossal sitting Buddha statue is 72 feet high, weighs over 550 tons, and is covered with almost 300 pounds of gold. Um, it was partially destroyed uh, uh, at, at least twice, but a, a few other times. Uh, and one time it was actually brought down to its feet alone. So it's been rebuilt. Um, uh, it's been rebuilt a couple of times over the hundreds, hundreds of years. Um, the other one. Uh, I talked about the cutting of the horns of the deer, uh, and here's something I, I'll read, which, which is uh, relevant to what I talked about, um, my little encounter with one of the deer. Uh, coexisting with Nara's deer, I got this from a site. Uh, this is also interesting to look up too. This whole idea of the cutting the horns is pretty fascinating. During the autumn breeding season, the buck deer of Nara Park can become quite aggressive. They've been known to charge residents and visitors to Nara alike and butt and stick them with their antlers. Yes, that's what happened to me. They can also cause damage to the park's trees and to property by rubbing and scratching their antlers against a tree's bark or against the surface of a building's wall. To cut down on the number of people being injured, the Nara magistrate began the Shika, Shika no Tsunokuri, Shika no Tsunokuri. Yes, that's uh, the deer antler cutting ceremony. And it started way, a l much longer ago than I thought. It started in 1671. So there's that. Um, I also, at one point, I wanted to correct myself. I, re I referred to uh, Nara as Kyoto. I, uh, I think it was dark and I was looking at the deer and I said Kyoto instead of Nara. So I just wanted to make sure that's straight. There are definitely two different areas on the opposite sides of the different sides of Osaka. Uh, then I talk about the fire festival, um, so that's called uh, Otai Matsu, uh, the fire festival. So among the many different events held uh, during Omitsu Tori, Omitsu Tori is a festival that happens uh, at um, in Nara. So the one that I was talking about is called the Otai Matsu. It's the most famous and spectacular festival. Uh, thing that happens at the festival. Just after sunset on every night from March 1st through 14th, giant torches ranging in length from 6 to 8 meters are carried up to Nigatsudo's balcony. That's where I it, it started to get dark and I took some shots from there. And they're held over the crowd. The burning embers that shower down from the balcony are thought to bestow the onlooker the are thought to bestow the onlookers with a safe year. Even though that night might be slightly unsafe, the rest of the year, if they survive unscathed, will be a safe one. Um, oh, yes, and one last one, the bibs. Um, I talked about this on a couple uh, of these YouTube things, and now I found one online, but I couldn't copy and paste in my document, so let me get to it here. Uh, it says, the most common statue you will see wearing a red bib is the Ojizo-sama. The Ojizo-sama can be found throughout the country, along roadsides, around temples, and in cemeteries. These statues are usually very small and have a childlike appearance. So what do they mean? The Ojizo-sama statues are one of the most popular Japanese divinities and are seen as the guardian of children, particularly of children who died before their parents. Um, let me read on more. What tourists usually find interesting are the red bibs that are commonly seen hanging on the statues. This practice is said to have begun when grieving parents put their child's bib on the statue in hopes it would protect the child in the other world. Sometimes they even put toys and cartoon figurines around Ojisama, who are also said to be protecting children from illness. Um, so I think that's pretty fascinating, and they look funny and cute, and it's also just a, a very serious... Um, reason behind it so it's endlessly fascinating to me and where you'll find them just like up in the mountains anywhere you'll see these uh, little bibbed 
uh, figurines. Um, so that was my trip. Uh, I finally did Hie Mountain, and that will be the next one that I will release. So this is um, a punk rock wizard's guide to hiking and or getting lost. Um, thank you very much, and goodbye.